G'day. Thanks for coming to Woodworking Masterclass. My name's Steve and welcome to my workshop. This season, what we're doing is making a beautiful Cabrera leg side table, complete with solid draw construction of dovetails and solid draw bottoms. So far, we've learned how to flatten a board by hand using hand planes and do joints, uh, sprung joints. So we've got the top joined up and last week we joined up these cheeks that go on the side of the cabinet that the drawer goes into. This week what I want to do is join those together using dovetails. Now dovetails would be the biggest thing in woodwork that causes arguments, difference of opinions and basically mayhem. Uh, should we cut the tails first? Should we cut the pins first? Should we use a coping saw? Should we use a chisel? Well really the most important thing about a dovetail is just do it. Whatever suits you, whatever style you like, is one that's going to suit you best. Over 30 years of woodworking, I think I've changed the way I do dovetails countless times. Sometimes because of Alzheimer's disease, I forget what I was doing, and other times I find a better way. Okay, another thing which is quite complicating to someone new to woodwork is a one in eight or a one in six ratio. Now, what does that mean? The rule of thumb is the higher the number, the lower the angle, the harder the timber. So if you're using hardwood, you'd use a one in eight. If you're using softwood like pine, cedar, maple, you'd use a one in six. These two you can buy commercially. That's a one in eight, that's a one in six. But what it actually means is the angle that the dovetail is cut at. A one in six is six inches long, up by an inch, and then you draw a line from that to the end which will give you the angle. So a one in eight is eight inches long, come in an inch, draw that line, that'll give you your angle. My personal preference is a one in five and a quarter. Now the problem comes because there's no commercially available jigs for a five and one and a quarter. So how do I get by? Well, I'll make my own. That's what we'll do now. I'll show you how to make a jig and you can use it for whatever angle. There's some dovetails I use and they're a one in four, which is a very steep angle and I had to make my own jig. Very easy to make, all we need is a sheet of paper, a 45 degree square, and I had to do a bit of conversion there. The uh, five and a quarter is actually 130 mil. I still like feet and inches, but I'm slowly getting converted. So we place that at 130 mil, we come in 25 mil, and then you can draw a line, but seeing I want to use this as a template, I'm actually going to cut this out. Get a knife, cut down there, and cut across there. That will save for another day. All you need is just a scrap bit of timber. I've got a little bit here you can use. Make sure it's flushed all the way around. Sticky tape. From my school, school days of geometry, put the sticky tape on the hypotenuse, which is the longest bit. Work out how long you want your jig. I'll have mine, I don't know, what's that, about 50 mil. It's all personal preferences. And then you lay the straight edge on that line. Good quality sticky tape, like so. Did that wrong way around. The hypotenuse goes down, like so. There we have it. Then you get your ruler and a knife, and just mark where that angle bisects. Don't need that anymore. Discard it. Then mark with a pencil just on the corners. Carry that around the size of the block on both sides. Whenever you're marking with a pencil and you're using a square, always put your pencil where you want it to do, go, and then move your square or the ruler up to it. That way you get a more accurate line. Now I'm going to cut that. Now we have a cut angle here and we have the corresponding angle here. All right, get a marking gauge. Doesn't matter really what distance, you want a, a nice area to work with, but not too fat. So 
set it so you get about six mil in the middle. Just mark that all the way around. And if you were watching last week's show, we made a bench hook. This is a very simple bench hook. Put that there. I use a Japanese saw, but you can use a normal tenon saw. And then cut in that slot you've made down to the markings. Left by your gauge. Other way around. Yeah. Pop it in the vise. I always use a lot of water because it really holds things in the vise very nicely. Okay, what's the best way to put that in like that? And then basically you just make a tenon by cutting the cheeks off. side. Be careful the Japanese saws. They're very, very sharp and they cut on the back stroke. So don't have your thumb behind it when you pull back because it will cut you severely. Now just work out how long you want it. We said about that long. Again, you can just cut it off with a saw. If you've got a power saw, sure use that. Hand saws are just as quick in most cases. And there you have it. A one in five and a quarter dovetail jig, which we'll use later on. But <clears throat> right now, what we've got to do is we've got five rails, four of which we use for the carcass, and the fifth one we'll need a little bit later on. So put that to one side. Now this is how I mark dovetails out. Put them in the vise. And by the way, whatever I do is not the only way something can be done. There are many ways of skinning a cat and there's many ways of cutting a dovetail. But I square them up. I come in from the edge, about three mil or an eighth of an inch in the old scale. And I bring those lines down These only want two dovetails, so I've just got to divide this in half. So I pick a point that I can divide by two. So I've got zero there, 50 there, half of that's 25. Put a mark in the middle. And then you measure three mil either side of those lines. And then continue them up. Now that's the set out for two dovetails. And what we'll do after the break is we'll use the jig we just made and we'll cut the dovetails and then we'll start forming our carcass. So if you'd like to join me after the break, we'll get right into it and uh, start cutting some dovetails. Okay, see you soon. Hi, welcome back. Just before the break, we made a dovetail jig that we're gonna use and we set some marks for the rails to build the carcass for our table. Now what we've got to do is set out the dovetails. How you do that is you work out, first of all, how far in you want your dovetails to go. Now you don't want the dovetails to go right to the very end because that weakens the side and you'll get blowout. If you have it too narrow, then you get very weak dovetails and it doesn't hold. So what I do, I set mine so I'm about, oh, I don't know, six mil from the edge, so it gives me a nice dovetail profile and also gives me strength on the edge. So what you do, is we'll mark that. Now that's how far the dovetail's going in. So what we can do here is also mark all the way around on this rail. 
So we've got our markings here and we know how deep we're going to be going. What I do is also I mark where this is going. This is the bottom back. So this part's going to go up and I always cut on the side that people see. So this is going to be up, this is the side I cut. Transfer the dovetail lines with a pencil just over to the edge a little bit. And then use your jig and draw the angles in. So you go from the line upwards, that way you don't go over the line. Spin the jig over. Go from the line upwards and line upwards. Okay, now we'll start cutting those tails. Just have to change my glasses so I can see better. Terrible, isn't it? Okay, now a lot of people want to offset their dovetails so they're just cutting at 90 degrees, but really that becomes a nuisance and time consuming. So just get a bit of practice and it doesn't take much. You cut all these angles going this way and then you come back the other way. I use my thumb and forefinger as a guide and cut down to the line. Be careful not to go over the line. And always cut on the waist side. It's not as important cutting the tails, but when it comes to cutting the pins, if you actually cut on the line, you'll find that your pins are going to be too sloppy because you're removing too much waste. A lot of people prefer marking dovetails out with a knife. I don't because I cut most of mine with a dovetail, uh, with a jap saw, and their blades are so fine, miss that one there, shouldn't be talking and working, should I? That the um, <laughs> blade will actually go into the knife cut. There we go. Then remove the waste. We do this so we don't have to do so much chiseling at the end. And cut the shoulders off. And again, cut on the waist side of the line, not on the line. Be careful you don't cut through the tails. On the waist side of the line. There we go. Okay, there's the beginning of our tails. We just have to clean the shoulders up now, and away we go. And again, there are several ways of doing this. I've made a little block, it's just a piece of wood. I've got some 80 grit sandpaper on the back. Put that down. I've got another straight edge, which I've had for years. Just a block of timber, but make sure it's 90 degrees from the base to the face. The top's a bit manky in the back, doesn't matter but you've got to be mindful of dressing it. And I use a bench hook. If you don't have a bench hook, an ordinary um, F clamp will do. Again, squirt of water. It's amazing how much water grips. Now you just line up your block. So just about bisects that marking line in half. Give it a Bit of a tap, make sure it's okay. Then all I do is just pair the waist away, working back to the line. Make sure chisels are really, really sharp and it'll go so much easier for you. Now you actually pair back to the line, but don't go all the way through. Go to about half the thickness of the dovetail itself. And then we'll come back the other side and we'll clean that up. That way you won't get any breakout. Okay. That's pretty good on the line. Give it another squirt. Line it up again. Right on the line. A lot of people get lost 
with doing dovetails and it, it's almost as if a dovetail is becoming an art form in itself. In reality, a dovetail is a serviceable, useful joint that goes into making a nice piece of furniture. It's a bit like saying the wheel nuts on a cow wheel are an end in themselves. They're not. They're an intricate part of the car, but they're not the car. That makes sense. I hope I'm not getting too philosophical for people out there. Okay. All right. Give that a knock. A bit of a clean out with a knife. Get right into the shoulders. There we go. I'll be honest with you, I have cut better dovetails, but that's the dovetail finish. Now what we have to do is transfer that onto the cheek so we can then cut the pins. And what I use here, it's a brilliant thing I first saw on the internet, a guy called David Barden came up with it uh, on England. You can check him out on Google. Mine's made slightly differently. If you want to make one, by all means go to the website, uh, woodworkingmasterclass.com. And I've got some plans there and a, a link to David's site. But this is how we're going to transfer the tails onto the pins. And it works quite easily. Where we've put the mark before, that sits in the cradle. And that sits in the vise. And when we come back, after the break, I'll show you how to line up the tails with the board so we can cut the pins accurately. So look forward to seeing you soon. Hi, thanks for coming back. Just before the break, we cut a couple of dovetails and I'll introduce you to the dovetail sled. Now how that works, as you can see set up in the vise, you put where your pins are gonna go, that particular uh, component, up against your fence, put it in parallel to the top. Take your dovetails up against the fence and you slide it along to where you're marking the line is. And that will correspond to the shoulders you've already cut on your rail. And then it's a simple matter. Again, if you prefer using a knife, use a knife. If not, I prefer pencil. Just trace your dovetail marks. And that way, you've marked your dovetails out. Now, I always put a cross on the waist side. So that's got to go, that's got to go. And the reason I do that is I've cut out the wrong side many times. So it's just a little reminder. Now we've got to know how far deep, depth wise, this has to go. And it's the depth of whatever your rail is. So set the marking gauge up to be the depth of the rail. And then put a mark on your job. Get your square, and again, transfer these lines just over the shoulder. And then mark them down. Pencil on the mark, slide the square up, down to the line, pull back. On the mark, down to the line, pull back. And the more accurately you can set these out, the easier it is at the end. Okay, so that's waste, and that's waste. Remember to always cut on the waste side. Now here's another technique I use for removing waste in dovetails, with a mallet. So I put a chop in, just in front of the line, about a millimetre in front of the line. Both. They're not quite even, are they? And then I actually do a chop on the line. Now the reason you don't go on the line with your first chop is because the chisel has a bevel on the cutting edge 
there, it will have a tendency to push the chisel back. And that means the back of the chisel will actually move your line down a bit, which you don't want. So if you do that, then you've got a nice little notch that's accurate. So when you're cutting, just make sure that you don't go right on the line. I always leave about oh, half a mil, and you can always pair back to the line. It looks much nicer than having to put a spare bit of wedge in to, to fill up where you've cut too far. And then to, to remove the waste, any saw will do. I just use a um, coping saw. Always make sure that the teeth are facing forward so it cuts on the push and not the pull. And take little wedges out cutting up to the line. And the reason we do this is it just makes it a lot easier when it comes to chiselling. So it's a, a way of removing bulk waste. I use a backing board. Squirt of water in the vise again. Now it's important to use a backing board because if not with this technique I'm going to use here you will break out the back of the, the panel you're working on. Ouch, that hurt. Okay, now when you start to take the waste away start at the closest bit to you and again just work your way back. Slowly, carefully, don't be looking to remove a large amount of waste in one hit just work at it and Yep, that's real blood, and if it was a cooking show, I'd have a blue band-aid, but thankfully it's a woodworking show. Come in underneath, undercut where you've pared down. Make sure that the chisel is parallel to the ground. Hopefully your bench is a bit more stable than mine. That's the price you pay. Okay, if you can get hold of a 1 8 chisel, they're fantastic too because you can get right in and clean the corners out. There you go. Or uh, a skew chisel will do. And sometimes a fishtail. Now I'm pairing back onto that line. I'm not going to go onto the line. I'm going to pretty close to it. And then I'll just have a check. All right, that's pretty close. So I've just got to pair that out a bit more. And when it fits, what you end up with is a full set, four rails and the carcass and when it's glued together, that's what you should end up with. Okay, well that's it for another week. So this is Steve, pulling the shed door down for another week and saying remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look forward to seeing you next time. Seasons 1 and 2 of Woodworking Masterclass are now available on DVD. Call 31 Digital on 07 30 10 7 331 or head over to the Woodworking Masterclass Facebook page to order. Grab a copy of Woodworking Masterclass on DVD and remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe and enjoy your woodwork. G'day, I'm Steve and I look forward to inviting you to my workshop for Episode 3 of Woodworking Masterclass. That episode, we'll be making drawers and I'll share with you how to make beautiful half lap dovetails, through dovetails, draw bottoms, and make your draw fit and slide the way it's meant to, the traditional furniture maker's way. So I look forward to seeing you then, Woodworking Masterclass.